What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another War Thunder video. You guys haven't heard that in a while, have you? <laughs> what's it been? Two months now? So what's going on? Where have I been? What have I been doing? Why haven't I been uploading videos? This is what I'm going to talk about in today's video. So, a year ago, it was May of 2017, that I began having health problems. I, I didn't talk about this except for just with a couple of people outside of my family, obviously. Uh, I just I just don't share a whole lot of personal stuff on social media and on YouTube. And it's, it's probably not going to change completely, but obviously this is going to, I'm I'm opening up a little bit about this today. And uh, so in May of 2017, I began having heart problems, believe it or not. It was just an ordinary day doing laundry one day. One day. It was a little bit warmer than it should have been, or what it had been. It was, it was unseasonably warm, you could say. And so I come upstairs from from the basement with the load of laundry, and my heart is racing. I sit down, I fold the laundry, and put it away, and it's it's slowed down. I, I get up to take the dog out. After all, he's got to go pee. And so I get back, and I, I, I could have barely made it around just around the house. And I don't live in a, in a mansion or anything. <laughs> I wasn't out there for, what, seven minutes maybe? And my heart is just... You, you could put my my hand on my chest and you could feel the heart. Like it's, like it's trying to burst through the chest wall. It's really weird. Unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. So at that point I realized I was going to have to do something. This This wasn't going to fix itself. So I decided to go to the emergency room, and uh, they got me in really well, or, or really quickly, and they, they immediately diagnosed it as being AFib. AFib is short for atrial fibrillation. Normally when you hear about people with heart problems, you think of people who have heart attacks or strokes, and uh, it's because of clogged arteries and that sort of thing. AFib is an electrical problem. In a normal heart, in a normal healthy heart, the four chambers of your heart take signals, uh, e electrical signals, from the top of the heart, and those those signals tell the heart to uh, to beat, to 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 push blood around throughout throughout the body. The problem with with my heart is that it's the, the signals are coming from all over the place, rather than one centralized area of the heart. So my heart my my heart it it doesn't know what to do. The four chambers. It's just inundated with these commands to, to, to beat. And so what you have is just utter chaos. The heart is it's just rapidly beating because the heart just doesn't know what to do. It, it's just it's trying to follow the orders, but the, the orders are coming from all over the direction, or excuse me, all over the place. So you just, you just have chaos. And so I had, what, a heart rate of something like 140, 150 beats a minute, which is just ridiculous. A healthy heart is something like 60 to 80, I believe. And, uh, yeah. So what happens is you end up getting tired because your your heart is racing almost all the time. Physical activity makes it ramp up more so than, obviously, sitting down. But even sitting down, your, your heart's uh, moving or beating faster and and at an odd frequency or odd rhythm, is, was, I think is the, the appropriate term for, for that. Now, this is this is mostly a quality of life issue for me, because I'm not 65 years old or something or something older. Uh, in an older patient, uh, AFib can prove fatal because of one of the side effects of of AFib. When your heart is beating erratically and rapidly like this, you're not able to get all of the blood out of your heart. So what can happen is that it can pull up. It can coagulate, and it can form blood clots. Now, a blood clot is not necessarily fatal as long as it doesn't move. <laughs> if it moves, it can be fatal, especially if it if it breaks off and goes to the, towards the brain. That's what happens when you often hear of strokes. Because I'm only 37, the doctors don't feel like I'm at very high risk of, of a stroke. They feel that this is more of a more of a quality of life issue. Which is great, but it also kind of sucks because 
the quality of life that you have with AFib kind of sucks right now. At least, at least that's what it feels like. Uh, I'm all I'm tired all the time, and as it turns out, along with AFib, I also have anemia. Just you know, just a, another another wonderful thing to have. Anemia is a, at least for me, it was an iron deficiency. I'm not able to produce enough red blood cells, and I need red blood cells in order to uh, transmit oxygen towards everything in the in the body. If I can't do that, I get, I'm tired. I get headaches. And I don't mean just an occasional headache. I mean all day long. Like from the moment I wake up and get in the shower to the way to the until the time I, I lay my head down on the pillow at night, I have a headache. Anemia sucks. <laughs> you know, you could take an aspirin or Tylenol or whatever, and it'll go away for a little while, but without fail, that headache will come back. And it's not a it's not a terrible headache, but it really it really messes with with your head. It really pisses, it really upsets you. It's like, why can't I get rid of this headache? Well, it turns out I have anemia. And so I'm I'm in a shitty mood most of the day. And this is why I'm, I don't, I haven't been making videos. That and the fact that I lost two terabytes of, of videos um, recently. I had, I had so much footage saved up, then it all just disappeared one day. I don't know if it was a hardware failure or a software failure, but 2.2 terabytes worth of footage just disappeared. That kind of sucked. That go to go along with all of the you know the, with the bad mood and the headaches and tired and all that. Yeah, this is this has been a shitty last year. <laughs> but truth be told, I'm actually feeling better right now. Um, I still get I still have AFib. Um, I still have anemia. But I'm 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 trying to control the 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 heart problems with a, a uh, beta blocker. Um, we still haven't gotten down to the root cause yet. I suspect that it's got to, it's got something to do with my sleep. So we're gonna have to do a sleep study at some point and uh, see if that's connected. It might be sleep apnea. We don't know yet. We have to do the sleep study first and then we find out. The anemia I suspect is mostly going to be. Uh, a diet thing. I have to figure out how to how to get more iron without taking in too much fat. Because I know there's a lot of meats that have uh, that have iron, but there's also a lot of a lot of additional cholesterol with that. So right now I'm on a uh, an iron supplement to help uh, to help to help my uh, my, my levels of, of iron increase. So that hopefully I can I can improve my health a little bit. And uh, get some more energy, and get rid of these headaches. So far, so good. I would say, um, like I said, I, I am doing better. the The last year has been kind of frustrating because I don't, I, I've, I've never known how much I could do physically. Um, you know, when you have that the heart problem, you don't know what, how, 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 uh, how active you can be. So as far as exercising or doing work around the the yard or house. Uh, you just don't know how far you can push yourself, real realistically. And I don't, I don't rent my my house. I don't, I don't rent an apartment. I, I own this this thing, so uh, all maintenance and everything, it all has to be done by me. And I didn't do any maintenance last year because I just, I didn't know what what I could and couldn't do. And, <laughs> and so that's that's left for a lot of projects this year, and we've already tackled a few smaller ones. Uh, just to see what I can and cannot do, and uh, so far so good. But the the bigger ones are are uh, a little overwhelming. It's going to take multiple days to get those done. I also have to set aside some money because uh, some things some things can be re repaired, but other things need to be replaced. And for example, the deck. I need to redo my deck. It's a uh, it's not a matter of cosmetics, it's a matter of safety at this point. <laughs> Some of those boards are just completely gone. It's just not safe to walk on a few of those boards, so I, I, I need to get, get to the lumber yard and uh, pick up some pressure tree lumber so soon. I've got a set of stairs in the basement that needs replacing as well. Repl repairing them is just out of the question. It, at this point, they, they, need to be re they need to be replaced. 
So again, another trip to the lumber yard. I'll be able to save some money there because I won't need pressure treated lumber. But still gonna have to pick up some some large lumber. That's a that's a big project. That's gonna take a couple of days to, to sort that out. But I hope today's video has given you some idea as to what, what's been going on around here. Um, it's, a, it's an issue of time uh, and just not feeling up to it. Um, by the time like 2 p.m. comes around, I'm tired. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> this is this is not a, not a wonderful way to live right now. But if you guys ever have any problems, go to your doctor. Because I'm telling you... Especially with, with something like your, like your heart, you don't want to take any unnecessary chances with that. I know a lot of you are young and you probably won't have have to deal with any of this anytime soon. But don't don't be afraid to talk to you to your your father or your brother or someone else in your family. Because I I know I've I've been through this. Um, it's just not worth taking any chances. Two weeks after I went to the hospital to deal with my AFib, I lost my father. Uh, just one day, he, he literally just didn't wake up. And uh, I had my dad, my dad was with me for a year, a year longer than, than we expected him to be. Um, but he could have been here with us a lot longer. If he had been a little bit, a little bit more, more concerned, I guess, with his health, a little bit more anxious to get into the hospital to, to see what was wrong. I mean, the whole reason I went to the hospital for my for my uh, my heart was because I suspected something was wrong, and I and I learned from from my dad. I learned what not to do. Sometimes that's that's what we do as as, as children. We learn from our parents. Sometimes our our parents do the right thing, and sometimes they do the wrong thing. Either way, there's usually a learning experience in there somewhere. And my hope is that you guys will will will, will take that information and, and apply it to your life. Or used to help someone else in your family. Men, for example, tend to not be as as proactive as far as getting in to see a, see a doctor as women. So talk to your parents, especially your dad. Talk to your brother. Encourage them to 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 be proactive about their health. If they suspect something is wrong, go see a doctor. Don't take any unnecessary risks. I know this this whole video got pretty serious. Pretty damn serious all of a sudden, but I'm, I apologize. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, another video soon. Uh, the 1.79 patch for War Thunder is just a day or two away. We'll be having some coverage of that soon. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Take care, guys.